get ready to do this. All right, you guys, second hour. The second hour, we are back. I am still with the unofficial mayor, Daryl Terrell. And uh, if you missed the first hour, go back and listen to it. Donovan Sadiq, you guys are on the Donovan Sadiq Show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. A um, lot of stuff going on, a lot of elections that, that we've really got to start thinking about. Uh, election, November 8th. You guys, do not forget to vote. I voted. I voted. I voted for my good friend, Daryl Terrell, not only because he's my good friend, also, because Daryl Terrell, I believe, is the best candidate, and he has articulated to me why he should be on that board. And I believe if you guys listen to some of our past shows, and if you look at some of his uh, mottos and some of his signs, Daryl Terrell will tell you. Uh, and, and by the way, if you haven't seen any of these TikToks, his TikToks have been magnificent. He's actually doing that. The other, his opponent. Haven't seen much. I, you know, I don't know if she's resting on pretty. I don't know what's going on. But, Daryl, in this election cycle all over the nation, a lot of people feel that, that they don't have to do debates anymore. Yeah. They don't have to show up to anything. They're not accountable to anything. So, you know, honestly, how do you feel about how the election is going? You know, like, I mean, between you and, 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 and Carrie, how do you think it's going? I feel I feel it's going. I feel optimistic, very mm-hmm. optimistic. I feel like... I will win this election, and mm-hmm. I will win it based on the facts, the message I've given now. See, it's different than than having people, like in some videos, speak for about you. Mm-hmm. But see, I did things differently because so I took what we did, did in, in twenty twenty when I ran for mayor, mm-hmm. and translated it into something different than I ever thought. Yeah, you know, I'm going to cut you off real quick, but a lot of people didn't think take your election for mayor very seriously and you garnered a significant amount of votes. Yeah. And spent not a lot of money. No. You know, so how, how you know, could you kind of tell us how 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 you went about that? Well, the, the thing is, you, you have to remember when we ran in 2020, the the election was we were in the pandemic. Mm-hmm. And you made a you made a good point. People going to be sitting around sitting at home doing Nothing, mm-hmm. trying to preoccupy. Mm-hmm. So what they gonna do? They're gonna be on their uh, smartphones, smartphones, looking at everything, and they can stroll through. Mm-hmm. And you made a good point. You said, you know what? We could use Facebook, Instagram, and all the social, mm-hmm. social media, media to get get our message out. Mm-hmm. And we were creative in doing in putting that message out. We mm-hmm. went to Adrian Mitchell Park to talk about sure. things over there. But but it it because people have to think when you get some of these mailers sometimes. You look at them. You hear people say, oh, I just throw them away or look at them and toss them. But see, when you have something in front of you like Facebook, TikTok, or these other social media, you could get a message out that's crafted. And you got to think about it. Because most of my messages on, on these platforms, you could see exactly, you could visually see what I want to do. Right, and what you're talking about. Yeah, when I'm going to different places, when I explain, when I go to Karma, when I go to different places... And you guys kind of wondering, it makes sense to you, oh, I did not know that. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, it's different than just seeing something, someone post on Facebook and just a, a, a you know, couple of statements and all that. But when you see me out there trying to explain to you why, what I'm trying to do mm-hmm. and explain to get, wow, you know, we don't have this and this and that. And I drive the Corona to let you guys know that if you want logistics, you got to go to Corona. Mm-hmm. Why not in Moreno Valley? Mm-hmm. It's a point. You know, I took the effort to do it because that's what people do. Normal people do. They get in their car. If they want to go to logistics, get a certificate, make more money, what they do? They get in their car and drive go. from Reno Valley to over there. Right. It's it's more and more interactive so people can see. And so we you taking that step forward from 2020 to this time around. It's the fact we're doing things a little different. We're doing things the same, but we, we're doing it more because I... Now I understand about TikTok, and I'm using the TikTok app to produce a lot of these things. It's just me by myself doing it, mm-hmm. and and to get my message out about economic mobility, and you know, using my my father who and, and try to explain to you to people. You know, and he was one of the the forces. Him and my mother and my grandparents forces why I do what I do as far as the, by economic mobility because. We wouldn't have lived our American dream, their American dream, if it wasn't because he got, he had, he talked about economic mobility. He talked about getting trained 
And so he be able to get that big old Cadillac, that big mm-hmm. Eldorado Cadillac, that nice house in the suburbs. <laughs> uh, be able to have a basketball court where we could shoot basketball at because mm-hmm. we lived in a uh, a one bedroom apartment in, in the West End Atlanta by uh, Clark Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's that's where we that's where we lived. And yeah. so when you you visualize the people that mm-hmm. Daryl Terrell is you, mm-hmm. he's me. He works every day. He had two jobs. Mm-hmm. And he's showing us a normal. I'm not dressed up in a suit. I'm not in suit and tie. I'm not. Well, o- o- only when it's a- 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 applicable do you get up in suit well, and tie. Well, yeah, exactly. But see, the thing that you know, it's like everyday people, like you was telling me before. Mm-hmm. People want to see who you are. Right. And I took that to heart. Mm-hmm. Because when you see me in a, a low shirt or or these shirts with no collars on it. Sometimes mm-hmm. I do and sometimes I don't. It's because it's it's where I'm at at the time. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so I'm going to be the type of person from Reno Valley representing our, our community of voice. It's going to be a person just like you. Not just talking about but really living the life mm-hmm. like a normal person does who works every day. Mm. So, so let me ask you this. As a student, um, um, you know, you were just talking about TikTok. Uh-huh. Okay. So it seems to me your strategy is you're doing something that's kind of out of the box, out of the yeah. thinking, because I'm an older person. So I don't, you know, I'm not on TikTok like that. My, my you know, my person, mm-hmm. I, I, I got an account, but I'm not on TikTok like that. Yeah. But younger people are. So it seems to me your strategy that you have been using. And a lot of older people forget about this, especially all those political gurus out there that think they know politics and, oh, I've been in politics for 50 years. Yeah, and look where it's led us here in Merrill Valley. Um, and that person knows who, who I'm talking about. But it seems to me you are basing a lot of your election not only on, on the people that already know you, okay? Because mm-hmm. we're in the same age group. So, you, yeah. so, so, so you're going to get those demographics yes. of friends and family and yeah. things like that. You're, you're going to get that. But it seems to me your strategy is appealing to those students yeah. at Moreno Valley High School. Because let's remember, you guys, those students at Moreno Valley High School are above the age of 18 if they're not 18 and above. Those are voters. And out of mm-hmm. all of the candidates in this election cycle, you are the only one that I have seen that has targeted the younger voters specifically by using TikTok. You know, tell us about that strategy. You know, well, I mean, how, how'd you come up with it? Well, like I said, when you when you have that might be a couple hundred votes right there. Well, my following on TikTok is like a hundred. Let me see, what is it? One hundred fifty-four thousand followers mm-hmm. on TikTok. Uh-huh. But but the thing is, you know, when you think about, like I said about this, it goes for like Reno Valley College beating the challenges of, in our community. Mm-hmm. It's the same thing. Campaigning has changed. Sure. And you have to go with the times. Society will push you in that direction. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, times are changing where the old style of politics are done. Mm-hmm. The new style of politics is being on social media, reaching out to the young people, mm-hmm. under, go where they are, mm-hmm. understand the things they do. I mean, you see some of my TikToks. Some mm-hmm. of my TikToks are funny. Yeah, they're very funny. I do a little mm-hmm. duet here. Right, but some I, dancing. I think you yeah, do, do some dancing. Yeah, right? but... You know, when you get down to how to get a message out to someone, because people understand he's going here. When you talk about here at Reno Valley College, I'm actually at Reno Valley mm-hmm. College. I said, when I went to UCR, I'm at UCR. Mm-hmm. So you see, what I'm trying to do is visualize to people, and to the young people see that. They just don't sit there and just read books all day. Right, right. They like to see different change. you got to make it fun. Yeah, especially on the breaks. You know, And, and I, I think it's kind of interesting. What, you know, let, Let's say you do get on the school board, mm-hmm. which I, I believe you will be. Um, I'm a student. I'm a freshman. It's my first year, whatever. And, hey, isn't that Daryl Terrell, the school board trustee? You're the guy that's in my TikTok video that I saw sitting in my class. You see what I'm saying? It, it's, well, yeah. I, it, I could relate. Well, that that's what it's about to to relate to someone. Someone that can relate to to me. I, mm-hmm. I, he relates to me because he's like me. Mm-hmm. He talking my language. Right, right. Because like your opponent and other people in the election cycle, it's like everybody's discounting these young people when when you really shouldn't because no. that is the biggest voting group 
combined yeah. when you take out the you know the baby boomers are losing members every day. There's no yeah. doubt about that. So if you're still doing old politics, I mean, if if you could pick up a couple hundred students yeah. that see your your thing, that's going to be the difference between a, a blowout and a close race. Well, yeah, like, like, yeah. When you think about it, because young people, like you said, in this day age, want somebody who they can relate to, mm-hmm. not someone who's a stuffy suit, yeah, or someone who thinks they know more than everybody mm-hmm. and think they like just. Brainiac. I made it, yeah. I've made it to the top. I'm a PhD. I'm a you know brainiac yeah. or whatever. They want somebody that hey, I like this guy. This mm-hmm. guy relates to me. He shoot a basketball, right? And he's talking and right. and he's doing all these. Hey, fun Mr. Things. Terrell. Um, you went to RCC. Uh, how was it when when you were at the MLK Library sitting on the quad? Yeah, exactly. You see what I'm saying? You, you, people yeah. could relate to that, to that story. Exactly. You were a student. Exactly. So when people see this old, this old 53-year-old man <laughs> out there on TikTok doing that. Still but, in the neighborhood. Yeah. And people like, you still do I do that? I say, yeah. yeah. It's not an age thing. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's what I'm adapting to technology. Right. And a lot of older people sometimes have a hard time. They have a tough time with self-checkout. But for me, yeah. you know, they have a tough time with that. Yeah. Like, I hate self-checkout. Yeah. But but to 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 relate to be relatable to students out there who say I've been I've been to the quad mm-hmm. I don't know what he's talking about mm-hmm. I hung out in time went down into the to the to the Target Dead I went down yeah. there and I was hanging out there mm-hmm. walking across mm-hmm. walking on top and looking yeah. down to everybody having but, to get on the bus system yeah maybe and pe- yeah and you you talk about these different people that's these different characters on the RTA bus mm-hmm. people that you you can relate to say yeah I know that guy yeah. having to get up early in the morning and exactly. dark and you know and, and you and you relate to people and young people see that that you relate to it's not he's he's fake he's real he's real right. He's approachable. We, yeah, he's not somebody gonna be smiling all the time, mm-hmm. just smiling, just mm-hmm. to be smiling. Oh, I'm this or I'm that on some video or something. But you're seeing somebody who's taking the time to to interact with you, and it's not like you know if you saw me, if you came up to me and we talked, you said, "Dang, you you're real." I said, mm-hmm. "Yeah, I'm real." Now, now let me ask you this too. You know, I'm speaking for the students. As a trustee, you know, you got a lot of groups out there, uh-huh. you know, student groups. You have, like, uh, the Black Student Union. You uh-huh. have the – and I, please forgive me. I don't really know what's going on because it's been a while since I've been to RCC. But you got the Latin group. You got the, you know, Middle Eastern groups, whatever. Um, would you be one of those trustees that the students would see, not necessarily on a regular basis, but they would be familiar with? Because when I went to RCC, I didn't even know who was sitting on the board. They sat in their little rooms, that little office that was kind of off. Mm-hmm. By the parking structure, kind of off by by the theater, that old building. It's gone now, but like back in the day, and, and that was their, that that was their little rooms, and it had their little signs on it. But they were never in there because they're in meetings and in other parts of the city, or something like that. So, would you be some uh, a, one of the, the trustee members that they would could be familiar with? So, since you're representing Moreno Valley, would, would would the students be familiar seeing you on Moreno Valley campus? Well, I've heard, I've been there. I've been there early in July where I talked to the, the president of ASNVC. I mm-hmm. talked to him. And we, we were sitting there have a, like I said, it was hot as almost 100 some degrees out mm-hmm. there, sweating real bad. Mm-hmm. And we were out there talking about issues, stuff that's facing the campus. And, and we had a nice, good conversation with some of the senators there. So mm-hmm. I'm more approachable to them because I was like them. I was a student leader. So mm-hmm. I know from their point of view um, what's what's you know what kind of things – that they need to see. And I asked them, have you ever seen a trustee here? Mm-hmm. I said, no, I've never seen one. Right, exactly. And so for me to be accessible, that I will be if, I will be accessible. And as long as, you know, my schedule allows me to, mm-hmm. I'll, at least I'll yeah, be Yeah, because you got to work. Yeah, I got to <laughs> so. work. I got to make a living. I got I got a full-time <laughs> job, but it won't stop me to drive over there to see the students and see mm-hmm. how they're doing and anything I do could help them. Mm-hmm. And I won't be invisible. I won't be there just to show up on election day, but I will be there. Like I told one of the, when I saw one of the, uh, the, the president again at uh, the opening of the new uh, school of public safety at Ben Clark center. Mm-hmm. And we were talking again. I said, Hey, you see, I said, have you ever seen one of the other candidates? They said, oh, they were at the main campus. Mm-hmm. I said, but not there. Right. Right. No. Wow. But see, the difference is for me is because I could relate to them because I was them. Mm-hmm. I was a student leader there. So I mm-hmm. know so there's some things 
that we can do together. But they, it's going to be upon themselves to take the initiative. But I will be there to guide, if whatever help I can to help and assist them to bring their issues to the, the board, board of trustees. Mm-hmm. Now, let me ask you this. Are you familiar with how the board of trustees works? I mean, I'm not trying to uh, be disrespectful well, or anything. But, I mean, like, you know, you want the upward mobility platform. Yeah. How do you push that through on a board of, what, five or nine people? Well, see, I can't micro. I can't. Well, the thing is you don't micromanage the, the, the board, the, the, the campuses, yeah. the colleges. Mm-hmm. You over you oversee like the finance, the administration, the chancellor. Mm-hmm. But what you can do, there's different entities. Mm-hmm. Like I said, on, like the fences at like Reno Valley College, you have an entity. You have the career tech education um, uh, director there. That mm-hmm. what I'm talking about. If I could go to him and say, "Hey, um, I have an issue about economic mobility. Can we get together with the city and the county and, and let's can we?" The stuff I've been talking about to create career paths for people, like the logistics. Mm-hmm. We don't need a building for lo- to build a brand new building for logistics. Right. We got an empty warehouses out there right now that we can use. Mm-hmm. Can we make it happen? Right, right and, down the street. But yeah, and, but see, the thing is, I could go to the key people that's on the campus, especially the people that's in charge of career tech education programs. So mm-hmm. At least I know because I've been to Marina Valley, mm-hmm. so I know where I could go to the talk to about that. Right, right. But but the thing is, I don't micromanage what goes on the campus. But I can, But when it comes to my, our interests, like you're saying, like in District One, like mm-hmm. you know, what's your interest in District One? Is it be the same thing on a bigger level? What's my interest from Reno Valley College mm-hmm. in our community? Mm-hmm. Because it's the people who elected me to that position. Right. So it, lo- so let me ask you again: mm-hmm. What is Daryl Terrell's vision? Daryl Terrell, the servant. What is it that you want to accomplish? You know, you know, I'm just saying yeah, this, I got you. you know, for, yeah. for you know, for for the people that are listening yeah, that just you. want to know again, because a lot of people haven't filled out their ballots. You guys get those ballots in as soon as possible so they can okay. get counted. So, what is Daryl Terrell's vision? Okay, here's here's my vision. Okay, there there are high growth industries out there mm-hmm. in manufacturing, medical, mm-hmm. logistics. Uh, in construction. Now, at Marina Valley College, the career tech education program does not reflect what's out there. So, the number one thing for me is my vision is to ensure if you want better jobs, if you want to have attract better jobs to our community and careers, then we we need to create career paths. Mm-hmm. And my thing is is to equip to ensure that you have. The remarkable skills you need to land that livable way jobs with economic mobility in those industries. That's what my vision is all about. My vision is to ensure that you have it. Because instead of you traveling 36 miles out of the community to some place because there's no career paths here for you to go, that's what my number one challenge, that's what my, my vision is all about. My vision is to ensure that, that you have those skills. Closer to home, those markable skills to land you that job, so you could be close to your family. Is to be a voice to speak out. That's what my vision is. Because if we can create an educated, skilled workforce, mm-hmm. then we will be able to attract industries that we only could dream about. That's just facts. That's a hundred percent. Because right now we don't have that. Mm-hmm. So that's my vision. My vision is is to create economic mobility, so folks like yourselves out there. Won't have to travel so far because you say, "Well, there's no decent job out here." But if you connect with the industries that I've met, been mentioning to you, a direct career path to those industries, mm-hmm. you will have a job closer to home. You will make the money that you deserve. You'll be closer to your family. You'll be involved in your community if that's what you choose. And that's what my vision is: economic empowerment. Ensure that you have the marketable skills mm-hmm. to land a job. That's, that's that's the bottom line. There's no hocus pocus to it. It just you read the career tech educational program, mm-hmm. and you look what's out there. There's nothing in there for it. My 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 role is to ensure that there is career paths that reflects what's out there. Right, right. Now, That's what my vision is. Now, now also uh, that that dream and that uh, goal of yours to do and accomplish, which you usually do. Daryl Terrell is uh, very very uh, famous 
for putting things into the public record. And if he doesn't do it directly himself, he writes the blueprint and yeah. another official takes it and, yeah. and, and puts it into motion. But it's basically uh, diabolical plans that come out of uh, Daryl Terrell's mind. So this plan and this vision that you have for mm-hmm. the city has no age requirement. So if I'm a 32-year-old man and I want to uh, do a career change, I could use that dream of yes. yours and that vision of yours to uh, not go into L.A. or Orange County. Yeah. Now I can change careers right here in Moreno Valley where I live yes. and follow another vision that yeah. matches the industries that, that we have here. So um, you guys got to take that into consideration. Also, um, we were talking last week in regards to, um, you know, we, we talked about a lot of stuff, but like like students uh, yeah. getting, you know, jerseys and, you know, Moreno Valley oh, and doing yeah, all that other yeah. stuff. Um, you know, pushing that idea and that agenda through is something, you know, um, I think that's kind of important as well. Yeah, I, I, you know, we had a, I had a conversation with a fella down at the bank mm-hmm. in a Riverside, and we were talking about what well, we were just talking about mm-hmm. about you know how, wearing the apparels mm-hmm. and, and things that say "Go Lions, Go yeah. Lions" and things like that. Mm-hmm. But that's the part what a trustee should do mm-hmm. from for for that particular area mm-hmm. is to make Reno Valley a college town. Mm-hmm. We can be a college town. We can have, like you say, but people got to rock and roll with the apparel. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. if they don't have it, then there's something, it's something wrong. Then we need, that's when we create the partnership mm-hmm. with the city. It's say, hey, Mr. Mayor or economic development person, let's put a plan together to make Marino Valley a college town. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something no one has ever. I think has never really it's done. Th- right, done, and like I said, yeah. it, and, and and it's really hard. We I and mean, we know the politics of what your job would entail. But the yeah. thing is, you never see people really hardcore advocating for the people, you know, and and what we need and some of the resources that we need. Like I said, uh, another one of your visions is to make sure Moreno Valley gets its fair share. Yes, sir. So, so in in doing that, does that mean that you're going to be going to combat with the RCC board down there or the the board down in um, Norco. Well, we see it's, it's it's not it's not really us versus them mentality. Yeah, yeah, it, you're, you're all in the same it's, district. It's, yeah, but it, what it is is our community has for far so long have lacked the career tech educational programs and other. We need a more holistic approach. Every campus should have a more holistic mm-hmm. approach. Norco should have same thing that Riverside have. Reno Valley should have the same thing Norco Mm -hmm. and Riverside. It should be a more holistic college. Mm -hmm. Not just one college doing this, one college doing Mm -hmm. that, and this one doing that. It should have be every college should have something that other the other colleges don't have. And and that's how you make a holistic because it shouldn't be just one college focus on this. That's what Magnet High Schools do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We're not a Magnet High School. But to to work with to get our fair share of resources entails that every that we get our fair share of resources that other colleges, the fences. You got you got RCC with the sports program. Mm-hmm. Reno Valley College don't have a sports program. Mm-hmm. Norco have somewhat of a program, but not very much. But when you have equi- and when you have um, equability, yeah, mm-hmm. that means every college should have some type of sports program. Right. Not one having everything. Every I know time. how old mm-hmm. it is. I know Historic. how expensive it is. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't stop us from having our fair share of those type of sports programs or, like I said, the career tech education programs or some of the art programs or things that other schools have. We don't. We should, every school should be holistic. Right. Well, well, let me ask you this as a father. I'm a, uh, I'm a black man, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, you got some Caucasians here and you got other groups here, right? Um, mm-hmm. Dominant. The dominant society, our dominant community is Latino, Hispanic, uh-huh. and there's nothing wrong with that. But that gives them an, a definite va- advantage over the other groups, and it's very, very hard. Now, um, I have been trying for years to speak uh, fluent Spanish the correct way. I like to learn the um, the Spain Spanish, which is the uh, the more etiquette one, more mm-hmm. straight. Um, but, of course, I'm from Southern California, so I, I, I speak a lot of slang Spanish when I can. And we, we were talking about an immersion program because you've got students now that are, let's say they're Caucasian and let's say they're uh, black, African-American, and they didn't take 
any Spanish in high school, right? They took French. I don't know why you would do that. But, yeah. but uh, you know, people, you know, they got yeah. some people that do that. And, and then when these kids graduate from high school, they find out that they're at a disadvantage because they can't speak a dual language of a dominant language here in the United States. And, and you know how I am. I'm very, very pro-black, but I'm also uh, very, very real. Yeah. I do not think you should be in the United States and not know how to speak Spanish. That's, we're in the Western Hemisphere. You've got a lot of Latin countries, Central America, South America. A lot of them speak Spanish and some combinations of. And I think that a lot of our students are just dis, uh, discouraged to even stay here for the simple fact that, you know, Spanish is a dominant language uh-huh. on the West Coast here. And we have a lot of students graduating that don't have Spanish-speaking parents at home and relatives. So um, if, when you go to a junior college, even a lot of colleges, yeah. they have Spanish. But the prerequisite is you had to have taken something in high school. Why don't we have an immersion program for um, native speaking English speakers like myself? If there was an emergen- uh, immersion program at uh, RCC mm-hmm. or Moreno Valley, yeah. I-, I would enroll right now to better my communication skills. Thus, I have a better chance of getting a job because a lot of companies want you to be dual language yeah. so what what is your thoughts on immersion program at the college level well i think as you you pointed out it's a challenge in mm-hmm. this in this country it it, comp- it becomes a barrier mm-hmm. for people to advance mm-hmm. when when you think like just like you said people are seeking that there, there's a demand of people that can speak a second language especially mm-hmm. spanish mm-hmm. and it's a more economic incentive for people to do that mm-hmm. and but like you like you're saying it, to me, a challenge, again, like colleges, Reno Valley College meeting the challenges in our community. See, that's a challenge in itself that we could provide for mm-hmm. people to help them better themselves. But not only economically, but be able culturally to be able to communicate with other people. Mm-hmm. Because when you build bridges, you build walls in front of people, mm-hmm. they, they have less, they lack the understanding of ones, mm-hmm. of what they're talking about. So it's a it's a wall. So we have to break that wall down and to introduce things like you just saying, an uh, immersion program, not only that will benefit all of us in, in this community, but also it will affect the corporate corporate the corporate America. Because mm-hmm. the people that you have uh, buying products, people that are um, service that's services and everything else, patronizing your business, mostly gonna come in, they're gonna speak they're going to be Spanish speaking as their first language, mm-hmm. and so it's, it's upon us in the business community, the uh, in the educational community, to to be able to meet that need. Right. And that's what I was saying before: we can meet our need and meet that company's need. And so, Merrill Valley College could play a role in establishing an immersion program so folks can be able to we can link together. Provide better service for us, our Spanish-speaking um, people. No, our non-Spanish-speaking well, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that would help us to be able to bridge the gap yeah, yeah. With, of knowledge and culture. Mm-hmm. Like, because, because, okay. So, can, the reason I bring that up, and a lot of people talk about it, is this: like you said, we have to deal with the tech that we have here in our city. Yes. So we have a lot of warehouses here, a lot of high maintenance type warehouses. So. Most likely, let's say I get my two-year degree from RCC in logistics. Mm-hmm. I'm not starting at the bottom. I'm going to most likely be a supervisor or a manager or whatever with my two-year degree, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of my uh, people that I might be supervising might not even speak English. And see, that's where, you know, like we have all these warehouses all mm-hmm. over the place. See, I think we could do as as a college is to go into these warehouses, places, and offer these type of courses to these folks mm-hmm. at where where they work at. Mm-hmm. Instead of have to instead of going all the way to Marina Valley College, we could go where they are. Sure, absolutely. But, because absolutely. you because you have, like I said, you have the public, you have the School of Public Safety is over there. Mm-hmm. And it's going they're going to expand it to some other areas. Sure. But, but the thing is we could use what we have out there. Mm-hmm. Go to these places like the Amazons, mm-hmm. the P the P and Gs and yeah. and places like that. Mm-hmm. And present those type of courses to to the 
to the employees, the out, employees there. out there. Mm-hmm. So to, to go help, to them, yeah, yeah, to help them to bridge the gap and also right. to help help people that speak only English to be able to communicate with Right, right. Because what a lot of people don't understand is sometimes when you, you are dual language, you get more money. Based exactly. on the fact Economic. that that yeah. and then and it might be the difference between getting a higher position and a lower position. And I will tell you this, some of these people that are at the four year universities that are not dual language qualified, because you could be Asian and still not speak Spanish. Yeah. You know, they will be flooding the schools to get into that dual immersion program so that when they get their four year degree, they're going to be even more of a, a triple threat. Because they know several languages, yes. plus have a degree in hand. Well, yeah, because the more you have, the more uh, economic you. Mm-hmm. I mean, you become more valuable because mm-hmm. you have that skill. Because mm-hmm. people are looking for. You see on applications all the time. Mm-hmm. People say, "Right, uh, bilingual. You right. need bilingual." Right, and they don't say just English, bilingual because but, they they know. Mm-hmm. The clientele that, that they're dealing with. Yeah. Right. And, and and that can be the difference between getting the job and not getting yeah. the job. And I can guarantee you, a lot of people that are in our age group, instead of commuting back to L.A., yeah. I've retired from that job. I've been doing it. I've been commuting for 33 years. Right. I say, well, I just want to pick up a little something at maybe Starbucks or something, yeah. you know, you know, just real, real, real quick. But number one, I'm older, even though there isn't supposed to be ageism and I don't speak a dual language. So that puts me at a disadvantage. I, I can go. almost guarantee yeah. you, like I said, I've been retired for 10 years now. And in 10 years, I should be well versed in advance in my Spanish. And I'm not because I'm just so content to speak how I've been speaking in Spanish because it's broken. It's, you know, English, yeah. a little English, this, mm-hmm. a little slang there and you know, a few words yeah. here and a few words there. Yeah, there's understanding, but I can't speak it. And I guarantee you in the time that I've been retired, that's something that I would want to be interested in. I've tried to take Spanish several times at different colleges. And I'm telling you, because I don't have a beginning aspect of it, it's very discouraging for me to stay in there when they're just more advanced than well, what, I, what I would like to well, do. Well, that's how, when I started at um, uh, RCC, mm-hmm. I, didn't, I didn't take no languages language in high school. Mm-hmm. So I had to take something. Because mm-hmm. then I thought, you know, Spanish. I never took Spanish here. Mm-hmm. I this guy never took Spanish before in his life. I started from scratch. Right. So, I mean, I got an... Um, at RC, I took a class in Spanish, I think, too. I did pretty good, though. Uh-huh. When uh-huh. I start understanding right. and speaking and stuff like that. And it isn't like you you, you can't use it because everybody speaks Spanish. Well, yeah, <laughs> and, and that's the thing about it. And yeah. not, and not you take, don't have to go to Mexico or in a place like yeah. that. Right. I should have took it in high school and right. I didn't. Right, exactly. That, and that's something I regret not doing. But if, but I, I learned from scratch, mm-hmm. went to UCR, and I took mm-hmm. a conversational. I did pretty good mm-hmm. in there, and I took another Spanish class. I did pretty well you know I, because I honestly believe if, if that thing was a, some kind of immersion program would yeah. be offered that would also help the community come closer because as exactly. me as a non-Spanish speaking person and of a different culture now I have a better appreciation of you know what the majority of the people are doing and saying versus always trying to be on the outside looking in yeah because you see people you can see people at uh, especially where I work at Lowe's mm-hmm. And there's uh, uh, Spanish-speaking um, folks that come in, and they get really frustrated because no one they can't find you. Right. They can't find them speaking any Spanish, yeah. so they get really ang- angry, and yeah. they just like anyone speak Spanish, you know. Yeah. And they yeah. shouldn't. Have, we should be able to have more Spanish-speaking speaking associates mm-hmm. in our store right. to to accommodate and to not only to accommodate, but to get to know each other. Yeah, and like you said, because when someone comes in and speaks, they, if they eyes light up. Yeah. It's, oh my God, yeah. I'm so happy. Yeah. And they and they could be, they could speak Spanish and, right. and and people understanding what they're saying and they don't feel so frustrated. And more likely they'll come back because there's someone there, there's people there that can speak Spanish. Well, and, and to me, for the students, it levels the playing field. Yeah. It levels exactly. the playing field because let's look at it from from a reverse angle. Yeah, we think, oh, Americans, oh, I'm black, I don't have to learn that, I'm in America, you know, and that's true, you don't necessarily have to, you know, that's not a, there's there's no dominant language in the United States other than supposedly English, but we know that's not true. Uh But you look at these other people that come here and migrate and immigrate here to the United States, they could speak their native language and within no time pick up English. Yeah, exactly. He's like, yeah, how are you learning? You know, and then here we are this, oh, I'm an American, I'm born and raised here, and I speak one language. Yeah, we lose out on a lot right. economically because right. 
we don't spill, like you said, murder. And I think something like that is something that we should strive for to have. Mm-hmm. And, and think about uh, overseas travel. There's a lot of major corporations that would love to have you go represent their country in Brazil yeah. or in Colombia or in Panama, let's say. Exactly. But guess what? You can't go because you don't speak the language. Yeah, you know? yeah, it's, exactly. It's, 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 it's a very sad thing. So I think that's something that you know, when you get on the board, you should really, really champion and say, you know what? Yes, it'd be nice if uh, high schoolers take Spanish, but what about the ones that didn't? Yeah, exactly. Because mm-hmm. I mean, there's there's a need. I mean, there was like I said for me, I'm like, oh, what am I going to mm-hmm. take? Because to graduate from a UC school, you have to, to have take a, a ethics or a, a language, a language, foreign yeah, language. language parts, right. right? You got it. You got to, or you won't get your degree. degree right. So you have no other choice in the matter. Yeah. Yeah. But in the long run, it benefits you overall yeah. economically and socially and right. everything culturally. Right. And culture and community because, like I said, exactly. a lot of uh, older people like ourselves, we would yes. go back and take that immersion program yes. at least to pick up a little something because most of my neighbors are Hispanic. I mean, and, you know, the, the, the grandmothers and the older, you know, mm-hmm. folks, they don't speak no English. No, they don't. You know, but they speak broken. Hey, neighbor, you know. Yeah, go, they say hello. Right. Go Raiders. You know, yeah. whatever they're saying. Yeah. You know, and you're just like, okay, cool. Because at least they, you know, they're reaching out. Right. And, and you know, the thing we could do, mm-hmm. somebody, I, spoke, I spoke Spanish to somebody and they were like, Mm-hmm. You know Spanish? I said, yeah. I know some. Yeah. Como esta este? You know, yeah. like hey, that, you I, know? Got a, yeah. I got a degree from UCR, so <laughs> yeah. I, I, hey, I, yeah. I, knew, I, I took a class in conversation, so yeah. that tells you something, because my professor did not speak, she spoke to me one time in English, she mm-hmm. says, no more, yeah. Yeah. and I had to do the class in Spanish. Yeah, I, so. I was, when, I was, <laughs> when I was traveling in uh, Panama, mm-hmm. I said something, and it was totally wrong, I think I called somebody a donkey ass, or something. it was really messed up, <laughs> and, and, they, and, were, they, and they kept looking at me like, huh, que, que? And I'm like, you know, you just it just, yeah. it just threw me totally off. And then you know, and then but when, the longer I stayed, though, my Spanish got better, and I yeah. got really immersed in it and stuff like that. So, but um, Daryl Terrell, we got about what two weeks to go before the election. Um, where are you going to be appearing? Uh, is there any last minute pushes that that people can see you and kind of see where you're going to speak or say a few words so they can take one last look before they? Go into the booths. I might go down to city council. Okay. I may go. I may go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I may do that. But also, there's some other things I, I, I really wanted to do, but I got, mm-hmm. I wanted, you know, I, I wanted today, I wanted to go to Imperial Valley okay. College. Mm-hmm. And the reason I wanted to travel, and you know, it's like three hours away from here, but. That's about two hours, two, two, two and a half. I, I thought about it, but, yeah. but like things, because I wanted to go down there with, do, to, to shoot, maybe shoot a video about. Housing insecurity, mm-hmm. and, and and that college itself has a uh, tiny house village on their campus for mm-hmm. homeless um, college students, and that it's unique. Mm, that's yeah. unique. Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying. I mean, I heard, I seen it, I read articles about it, but I wanted mm-hmm. to go, I wanted to go see for myself mm-hmm. and and to see what it's all about. Mm-hmm. So because it's unique, because as I was telling you guys before. It's going to be five years before either Norco, uh, mm-hmm. Riverside City College, and Moreno Valley College will get housing. But why should you have to wait five, five years, years for something like that where there's colleges right now, it's three hours away, but it's worth the trip to see what they're doing about housing for the homeless kids, mm-hmm. homeless students. So to me... I was going to do something like that. and But also, too, I was thinking of something else. You know, you got a barracks out here that sure. bought it up. Mm-hmm. Why not we, we reach out to joint powers and see if we can use that to house some of our, our homeless students? Mm-hmm. Not only that, sure. with wraparound services and maybe we have a shuttle go back and forth. Mm-hmm. So so they can leave the cars and they don't have to leave it over at the campus, but it go back and forth. Mm-hmm. That's something. So I, I might, I might do some more speaking some other places too. I, I'm just thinking as I go. Sure, sure. But, yeah. but that's that's your question. But yeah, I yeah. thought about going down there. Too. Right, right. Um, you know, uh, uh, real quick, do you have like a cash app if somebody wants to donate and kind of like you know, I know we're in the last throes of the campaign, but you have like a cash app or just go to the website. Well, the people could go to uh, you could go Venmo. Venmo, yeah, Venmo. Oh, you could go, you go mm-hmm. to PayPal because all. 
all my accounts are linked to my uh, campaign account. Sure, gotcha. So, so you're not going to give me money. You're right. giving my campaign Same money. money. Uh-huh. So if you want to, you can go yeah. to Vidmo or you can go to PayPal if you mm-hmm. want to donate to the camp, right. to the cause. So, so we would go to uh, Venmo, let's say, Daryl Terrell. Yeah, you could just say put Daryl Terrell in. And so when you receive it, you just I just put the... Because it's linked to my my campaign account. Yeah, and and if you're gonna donate, you guys please uh, put in like the four thing, campaign or something, so he can so he can uh, delineate yeah. which it's for. You know? Yes, because you know you have to be transparent, and right. like I said, if you are gonna do it, just make sure that that it will go into that account if you choose mm-hmm. to do it. Right, because you're you not you're not forced to do it, but right. if you want to. Well, you, we have a, we have a lot of people out here that love the check four sixties and catch you in a catch, oh, and it catch oh, people in a catch twenty two and all that other. Oh good yeah, stuff, they you know? yeah they definitely want to yeah. do that. But you know my my campaign has always been mm-hmm. above ground, right. transparent, mm-hmm. and and the, you know the money that I've I've, I've raised yes. come from individuals. You know, and, 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 and speaking of the money you've raised, uh, how are your signs doing? My signs are still up no one. I said, oh, I, may, I take I take that back. Somebody tried, somebody tore one of my signs down uh-huh. off of Hecock and Ironwood, but right. that's okay because you know what? They ain't stopping me. Right, right. So whatever they do, I'm gonna keep on pushing for it, and no matter what they do, I'm gonna be on top. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna win this election. Yeah, and and, and now you know uh, if there's a camera in that system, you can go to the camera system and kind of see who did it. You yeah, because they t- they tore it down, and but that's okay. We yeah. put it up somewhere else. Sure, sure. But a lot of people that don't know that it is a, a misdemeanor to uh, deface uh, campaign signs because those are personal property. So if yes. you're if you're one of those people out there defacing signs, please, it is not worth uh, getting a, a misdemeanor on your record. It's just not worth it. If yeah, you, you know, if, if you want to vote against a certain person, just vote against them. Exactly. Don't give them your vote. That's the best way to protest it because it's not worth. Um, Getting something like that on your record and being nope. embarrassed and all that other good stuff. So, and that's for all the candidates, not just Daryl Terrell. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, again, the campaign. I, I, I if you're asking me as a political pun, a pundit, I think the campaign is going to be close, but not in the close of the aspect of maybe you know ten or twenty, thirty votes. You're the only candidate between you and your opponent that is actually reaching out to the students, which I think is a brilliant. Strategy, because those kids they they're on TikTok all the time. They're watching TikTok videos, and now they're going to see this guy named Daryl Taro who's dancing in the videos sometimes yeah. and put pointing out certain things. Yeah. And they're you know and you know how kids are. They're very rebellious. Young people, they're very rebellious. I'm gonna vote for Daryl Taro because you know hey I just seen him on TikTok. You know sometimes you'll get a vote just based on that. Yeah. Whereas your opponent is more like well I've got more of everything and I'm a PhD and. Uh, you know, we're going to do more of the same. And that's pretty much well, what I'm getting out of it. Well, that's why I say the difference is because mm-hmm. I'm real. Right. I'm, a, I'm one of the real people. Mm-hmm. I'm the real deal. My name ain't Holyfield. But, <laughs> but I, I am the real deal, people. What you see is what you get. There ain't, there ain't no, there's no fakery involved. Mm-hmm. You, you, what you see is a real person who, who has a heart of their community and has fought. At the river, at the Riverside County Behavioral Health Commission, mm-hmm. for our, to be a voice to get our fair share, I've been successful at it, mm-hmm. and I've graduated from UCR. I graduated from RCC, and I have used my education to better our community, and I will continue that journey to better our community at River, at our Moreno Valley College on the RCC Board of Trustees. So I'm asking you for your vote. I'm honored by it, by your support and your confidence in me, that we will together push this city to heights that we only could dream of, together. Amen. Amen. You guys, again, please, when you're mark- marking those ballots, please mark Daryl Terrell in uh, Trustee Area 5. I mean, he's the only candidate that's actually out here doing the work. Um, it's you know, uh, And good luck to all the candidates out there, but let me tell you guys this. Vote your interest. You know, you shouldn't be voting because you're a Democrat and just voting for dem- for, 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 for uh, Democratic candidates. That, you know, that's that's not very smart to do that because your interest is not my interest. If you believe in Daryl Terrell's vision, that's who you should be voting for, straight out, period. Now, what Dr. Thin's vision is, 
I'm not exactly sure. She puts out a lot of the, 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 the Democratic talking points. But this isn't a Democratic or Republican election. I always remember that, too. This is a nonpartisan election. If you got college-age students that are going to college and, you know, and you, you like some of the things that Daryl Terrell is talking about to keep your kids close and here in Moreno Valley, and giving him that upward, uh, that upward mobility, this is the guy to vote for. I have no doubt Thank that uh, Daryl uh, is the candidate that we need to sit on that board to represent Moreno Valley. Hey, you guys, Donovan Sadiq Show. We are going to see you guys again next week. Thank you guys for tuning in. Daryl, hey, man, keep, keep doing the work. You got it, man.